the best fried rice. This right here, this makes the best fried rice. I'm really hoping that you guys are not throwing away your old rice. This is just a couple days old in my fridge. Should probably pull you guys out of the fridge. If you already knew that, which I'm sure you probably do know that day old rice makes good fried rice, I want to show you what condiments I have found make a really good fried rice. Also, do you need to use a wok? Can you use a pan to make fried rice? I also just want to throw this out there. Um, I didn't think this would be enough. This is a uh, rice that I made two days ago and dried out. This is rice that I just bought today at the store. But um, look, I was actually not going to share this, but anyways, whatever. Um, this is the uh, pre-made microwavable rice. And the reason why I bought that, it's a little hack, actually. You can take that pre-made rice and just dry it out in your fridge for a quick, like, you know, 30 minutes or so. Because if you do have to make fried rice in a pinch, it's going to be a while. You got to like cook that rice all the way through and then you gotta dry that shit out probably like overnight and that's not enough time you know um, so if you're in a pinch that's the move just saying and also if you want to sort of speed up the process we don't have those high powered jet burners at home i keep my pans in the oven this is something that we do when i say we i mean the places I used to work at. Um, we would keep pans in the oven all night long. Clean them, toss them in the oven, pull it out, sear a fish. That's the move. So this is a good move if you want to have that pan ripping hot. Uh, yeah, keep it in the oven, pull it out and make fried rice. Yes, you can make fried rice in a pan. Um, I do want to make my fried rice in my walk today though. Um, I've made thousands of fried rice orders in this thing. I love this thing. Look at it. It's got lots of love usage on there. Um, I didn't think I was gonna share this. Um, might as well. I pissed off Uncle Roger. Wait, no, wait, 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 what? What, he put it in there? Ketchup on your... Uh, about a year back. You know that guy that's the comedian. He does the, the voice and he will comment on stuff like usually like someone making a fried rice and just talk BS. I pissed him off, but he was completely wrong. And even my buddy, Vincent, Dim Sim Lim. Did you know ketchup is actually Chinese? Is it? Ketchup, ketchup, ketchup is Chinese tomato sauce. Ketchup on fried rice is authentic. It's authentic. Had to like explain it. It's authentic. Anyways, um, Kim Chup, Kim Chup. This is one of the best fucking condiments that'll be in your fridge, I'm telling you. And you can make it. I don't know if they sell it. This one is thanks to an old chef of mine. We sold thousands of fried rice orders and we used kimchi. We would make it in-house. So it's kimchi. I made a video on kimchi. This is that kimchi, by the way. Um, my kimchi is a little bit spicy. So this is gonna make a really good kimchi. I also have quite a bit of ginger in my kimchi. That might not be the move. Um, but yeah, this really pissed off Uncle Roger, which is odd because ketchup in many things is authentic in Asian cuisine, especially in fried rice. Uh, anyways, um, this kimchi, it makes for a nice caramelization in the fried rice. And that's something that you want, especially if you're frying it. Yeah, I'm putting ketchup in. Let's see, I've got about, let's call it two cups of kimchi. And this is about 14 ounces by weight of ketchup. This looks like about two cups of ketchup as well. So I'm doing equal parts by volume. If your blender ever needs a little, a little help, just give her a little shake, but make sure to firmly press down because then you're going to ruin the thread. I want you guys to try this as well. When you do make it, I just want you to taste it. Don't go by a recipe, just kind of taste it, see how you like it. 
I do like that. I was gonna add some citric acid, but it doesn't need it because my kimchi is really bright. Um, I want you to taste it though. Like you might want it a little more funkier than mine. I mean, I did two cups and two cups, two, two. Seriously, this stuff will be something you'd want to put on everything. And you get to store it in your fridge for a good while, honestly. I've had some in my fridge for like a month and it's still good. Cause I mean, kimchi is, you know, it's a ferment and ketchup is, ketchup is actually technically a ferment too, right? So this should hold. This is one of my favorite condiments. And this is one of the reasons why I think I make a good fried rice is because of this condiment. It's very forgiving if you can't make a, perfect fried rice like me. Um, so good. This right here is called forbidden rice. No, it's not forbidden. Um, this stuff, I'm gonna puff. I'm gonna make a, a topping. Forbidden rice, sesame, Korean chili flake, yeah, furukake basically. And it might sound kind of weird to put rice on top of rice, but textures are very important when working with, uh, with making a dish. You know, textures, I think, really do affect flavor. Um, even Josh Weissman just made a book on it, textures, all about textures, I think. Um, but yeah, textures really do affect flavor. That's why we're gonna puff our rice and make something crispy to put on top. Okay, there it is all puffed up and nice, but I want to tell you guys, I just want to make sure I reiterate this like loud and clear. Okay, it must be forbidden rice. If it's not forbidden rice, it's not going to puff. The way you can make puff rice if it's not forbidden is to cook it, dry it off in the dehydrator, and then fry it. Um, but if, if it's not forbidden rice, it won't puff just straight out of the package. Just making sure you know that. You can't just buy like any old black rice, it's not gonna work. It has to be forbidden. That's what it should say on the package. Sorry if I'm like saying that too many times, but I just need to make sure because I don't want to hear people saying like, Matt, I tried it and didn't fry, it didn't puff. Forbidden rice, 400 degrees Fahrenheit oil, puff. And here is another condiment that I think makes a really good fried rice. Furukake. Really easy to make your own furukake. Also, Ladybird really loves nori. Now, here we go. All the ingredients for a really fucking good fried rice. For my protein, I'm gonna go with some leftover duck from the store. My eggs, I'm using confit garlic and garlic oil, kimchi furukake, day-old rice. I'm starting with a high smoke point oil. This is uh, just some straight up avocado oil. High smoke point, generous on the oil because it's called fried rice, so I wanna fry it. Once my rice is all lubricated, I'm gonna add in some more oil. Scallion batons, garlic confit, then my duck. Then I like to go generous on the black pepper. I just love a lot of black pepper in my fried rice. A little bit of MSG. Pinch up, could go in. See how wet that is? It's basically like a cake. I want that. I'm getting caramelization now. I don't like to make fried rice where I just give it a little toss and it's like no color at all. I like to have some nice color and caramelization on the fried rice.
You might be wondering why I'm doing this, the whole like flattening it out thing. That's just so I get more surface area to caramelize on the rice. That's the beauty of the wok, is this heat's gonna be dispersed throughout the entire thing. Oh, also, I forgot to mention, totally forgot to mention, the ladle. I don't know what they call it. I call it a wok ladle. This thing is probably the most important tool in making fried rice. Not only because it can make a perfect portion of fried rice, but just the scraping part of it, the length, everything about it. It's a great beater. This is the tool to get. Ain't that pretty? Fried rice. I like to do uh, egg on top instead of scrambled egg inside. I don't want to ruin the thumbnail one. Oh, fuck. <laughs> 